So the reason that I'm actually remaking this video is because I found seemingly more accurate ways to test out and see what Zen's theoretical speed is. Of course, like always, all of the disclaimers that apply to that last video also apply here. I am not a software engineer or any engineer. As a matter of fact, I'm just a guy that's theorizing stuff. All right, guys. So to get on with the test, I actually have three different CPUs with me. I have a pile driver one, I have a steamroller one, and I have an excavator one so I can pretty much test the generational differences between the three CPUs. Now, I know that these have different specifications, but to get it as close as possible, I try to match the Athlon 845, which is the excavator CPU. So with my FX 6350, the power driver CPU, I basically uh, disabled two of the cores and I clocked it to 3.5 base and 3.8 turbo. I basically did the same thing with the Athlon 860K, though I did not disable the cores because I did not need to. So after doing that, I ran Cinebench R11.5 and these are my scores. The 6350 had a score of 0 0.88, the 860K had 0.97, and the 845 had 1.11. Now AMD claims 40% increase in IPC over Excavator, which is the Athlon 845. So using the scalar of 1.4, I got a score of 1.54 for Zen CPU. So how does this actually compare to the competition? Well, a piece of perspective posted an article not too long ago that compares the last five generations of i7 processors and the IPC gain between each. So each of these i7s were clocked at 3.5 gigahertz and these were their scores respectively. If you compare these scores to Zen, you'll see that Zen is on the heels of the Haswell architecture. Now it's good to note that this Zen CPU that I'm theoretically testing is a quad core clocked at 3.8 gigahertz. These CPUs are quad cores clocked at 3.5 gigahertz. So clock for clock Zen is going to be slower than Haswell at least theoretically. Now I'm gonna put things in an easier perspective. Using the 6350 as my baseline of 100, I will show you the percent differences between each of the CPUs and pile driver. So the 860, which is steamroller, is 10.2% faster clock for clock, in IPC anyways. And as you can see, this is pretty identical to what I had on my last video. The difference comes with excavator. Now in my last video, it was about 15% faster than steamroller, but here, at least in Cinebench R11.5, it is 26% faster clock for clock. According to my math, a Zen quad core clocked at the same speed is about 75% faster. Now in terms of Intel CPUs, the i7-2600K is 61% faster in single threaded applications, not clock for clock, when it is 3.5 gigahertz and when the pile driver quad core is 3.8 gigahertz. Same thing goes for the 3770K and onward, it is clocked at 3.5 while the pile driver CPU is 3.8 gigahertz, but the 3770K is 68% faster the 4770K is 76% faster, the 5775C is 87.5% faster, and the Skylake 6700K is 95% faster, almost double the speed. So as you can see, again, there's gonna be about a 1% difference between Zen and Haswell. Like I said before, and I'm, I can't stress this enough, not clock for clock, but a little bit less than that. All right, so after doing all of those calculations, I did notice that the FX CPU and the i7 CPUs had something a little bit different uh, about them than the Athlon CPUs, and that is L3 cache. In very simple terms, cache is pretty much a small pool of memory that is used by the CPU in its next iteration. You've probably seen this before without knowing it, but if you go to pretty much any retail site that sells processors, it will list what kind of cache it has and how much of each cache it has. Now, L1 cache is the smallest and the fastest, and it's closest to the CPU, L2 cache is the next fastest, and it's also the next largest, and then L3 cache is the slowest and the biggest that's on CPUs right now, at least consumer ones. There is L4 cache, but we won't get into that. Now, where does cache make a difference? Well, it really makes a difference in games and programs that have a lot of information that needs to be processed. So pretty much any kind of video editing or rendering software, or any kind of game that really takes a toll on the CPU. So simulators are really known for this. It's also good to note that the higher you go in resolution, the less cache matters because the program becomes more GPU dependent. Tom's Hardware actually published an article that shows the difference between uh, having L3 cache and not having L3 cache, and they used an Athlon 2 processor and a Phenom 2 processor to compare the two. Now there was a 6% difference between the Athlon 2 and the Phenom 2, with the Phenom 2 taking a little bit of a lead. And assuming that that 6% stays consistent and scaling is pretty perfect, you can expect Zen, with L3 cache on it anyway, to be somewhere between Haswell and Broadwell. Again, this is not clock for clock. Clock for clock, assuming that it has the L3 cache and in a perfect world with near perfect scaling, it will be a little bit faster than Haswell. Me personally, I am still expecting Zen to be a little bit behind Haswell clock for clock in IPC. 
so yeah, I expect some pretty cool things from Zen. Um, I'm pretty excited myself, but I'm trying not to live into the hype too much. So yeah, I appreciate you guys putting on your tin hats for a little bit. If you guys enjoyed this video or any of my other videos, uh, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you love them that much. And thank you guys again for watching and commenting and sharing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.